Uh, how are things going? Are you excited about going to Gambia and Senegal this uh, next week? Uh, yes, uh, brother, absolutely. Um, uh, ready to um, ready for the journey of a lifetime. Uh, we head right out uh, March 30th mm-hmm. uh, uh, from the U.S. directly from JFK, New York, all the way to Dakar, Senegal, and Delta Airlines. You know, and all of our flights connect to New York City. Okay. So we are 17 strong and ah, uh, ready to go. Beautiful. So yes, family. This is Bomani Tayamba, Africa for the Africans, and we're just ready for our next journey for a lifetime. Right on. And we already have our journey set for our Ghana, May 24th to June 5th, and it is uh, 20 of us so far. So same thing. Got our sequence set up for us to leave directly from. New York City on Delta Airlines directly to Ghana. Uh, so that's a nice flight sequence, and then that's some incredible itinerary on both of those journeys. So those are the next two journeys. And as far as uh, this one coming up, eight days away. So right now, in the final stage of just packing things up and uh, just getting everything finalized on the other side, uh, since we're going to two countries, uh, crossing over from Senegal into the Gambia. So you have to have your visas and you have to have all those things arranged for you to make your way in and out of uh, both countries. So you're going to take a, bu- a, a bus from from Senegal? Because, I mean, really, Gambia is inside Senegal. <laughs> it's kind of funny amazing. when you look. Huh? Oh, uh, yes, that's amazing. It's inside Senegal. Yeah. It's right inside Senegal. So it, it, it Senegal surrounds Gambia. But you you take a bus um, into uh, Gambia and then back to Senegal, or you will you leave from Senegal back to the states? Uh yes. Uh, so so me, I give everyone a nice uh, routing. So once we fly into uh, Senegal, uh, DSS, the new airport, we're going to be spending four uh, four nights there in the car. And um, on those four nights that we're there, um, just give a quick overview of the you know what we the sequence of our schedule. Uh, we have our once we get there, we have a you know we have, you know we have a nice um, you know we have a nice hotel lodging in, in the Almadis area um, that's um, right there by the you know, the peninsula, the, on the furthest peak on, on the physical continent of Africa. So that's a beautiful location uh, uh, right there. In, uh, give us a nice little logistic area to move around because you know, we're going to be eating out at some nice restaurants and just be able to just enjoy the tropical life. But as far as our activities and tours, uh, the first thing we're, we're going to get to is the African Renaissance Monument, the man, woman, and child statue um, with a whole lot of stairs. And it's... Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, it's you know, huge, a, isn't a, it? A big, thing a is big huge. highlight. Yeah, so Beautiful. we do the walking tour, and then we also do the museum tour on the inside, and also we go up to the to the elevator up to the to the 15th floor, and then you'll be able to see around the car uh, through the man's head. Uh, so that's uh, one of our you know highlighted our tour uh, for the day. Uh, the next uh, three days, what we have is a uh, uh, full tour of Gory Island. That's the entire island, including the uh, save uh, the uh, the slave dungeons or uh, African Holocaust dungeons. And also museum and historical places there. Enjoy nice uh, dining. And we're gonna come over on the ferry boat and head back on a ferry boat. Uh, so that's a full day right there. Then uh, the next two days, uh, we have our Pink Lake. So we're gonna head out and just um, to that area, get on our four by four, go around the sand dunes, you know, do a tour of uh, the uh, salt mining operation there. Enjoy nice, uh, and then nice dining. And also just get a chance to just get outside of the car and to see the, the countryside. Then the uh, last tour day we have is a full city tour. And the highlight of that is going to be the African uh, Civilization or the Black Civilization Museum. It's an incredible museum itself where you can literally spend the whole day there. Uh, but we just, you know, it's a short tour. Uh, so what we have uh, is translators because everything is basically in French. Right. And that's what you get with most of the museums. So. I have two tour guides that are, you know, that's going to be with us uh, translating and, and helping us uh, move around as far as our main tour crew. Gambia, the, uh, is Gambia British? They speak English in Gambia? Yeah, former British colony in right. Senegal, former French colony. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what we have to do when we're in uh, Senegal. And, you know, while we did, we just moving around the city and just going through the historical parts of the city. And the tour guide is just giving lectures and explaining about the the history and you know, the city of uh, Dakar, Senegal. So that's our four days there. And once we, we leave on the next day, we're going to do a five-hour ride to, um, you know, uh, from Dakar all the way to um, the Barra, where you have to get to the point where you have to get to the, you have to cross the Gambian River and you have to get to Banjul. Uh, so we'll get ourselves on the ferry boat and then we'll get our bus to get on the ferry boat also and take us over. And then we have nice lodging there in Kaloli, right in the center Gambia area. Uh, and uh, that's at uh, Santa Gambia Beach Hotel. It's a nice resort uh, right there on the beach so we can just relax, kick back. And the schedule in the Gambia is a little more laid back. We have one full day of city tour. And then also the next day we have... Um, a full tour of uh, going down to James Island, uh, Kunta Kente Island, formerly known as James Island, and then going to Jufri and and, and the neighboring um, village and going to a historical slave museum. And you know, that's, so that's another full day. And we're going to be sailing on the Gambian River on our own private boat, uh, where we have, you know, we have our dining, we have our restroom, we have our top deck, and we can just kick back and enjoy a nice um, uh, cruise. Uh, so that's uh, that's the tour dates that we have set up. And the last day that we have uh, there as far as the tour day, uh, the last free day in the Gambia is uh, literally uh, we're going to be meeting up with some repats from the African diaspora community and connecting with them for, for dinner and maybe some afternoon connections. And the day that we get there, you know, we're right there on the beach as well, so we'll be able to enjoy the pool, the resort, the beach, and kick back. And that's our incredible Senegal and Gambia, this route of an incredible journey of a lifetime. And uh, we have T-shirts, pens, books, um, you know, a whole bunch of this wonderful things to give our our tour members uh, traveling with us. That's great, my brother. That's beautiful. Man, for, for the family who's, who have the, for those of the family who have an opportunity to go with Brother, brother Bomani next week, Thursday, March 30th, to Senegal and Gambia. It, it is truly a trip of a lifetime those who had the opportunity now of course then as soon as you come back you you always prepare for the next one which is you know going to be um um excuse me which is going to be uh going to ghana uh yes ghana and, and as i was saying also is that we have our tickets already and we, are, we have our reservations already and we just uh uh getting things uh all finalized and this is you know we, i know it's two months ahead of time but we do a lot of these things just way ahead of time, so everything is always to get get started a year in advance. So all of the schedules that we have, we give people months in advance now, and then what we have for next year, give you even a year in advance. Right. Uh, so anyone that's interested in any of the journeys, uh, they're on a rotating schedule. So, uh, you know, you know, you, if you can't get on Senegal and Gambia and Ghana, then you just have to look at the options of what's uh, available. And I mean, you're talking about an incredible tour schedule where uh, those who are coming with us can you know literally just uh, get a chance to go to all aspects of Africa uh, you know from north east south uh, west yeah I noticed that um, you know you, you have some returning obviously Ghana is a, is a mainstay that's you've been there the most times how many times have you been to Ghana uh, 22 times and this will be the 23rd journey of a lifetime that's from 2006 all the way up to, um, the, you know, it'll be May 20, uh, 23. Uh, that'll be 23 journeys over the span of um, uh, close to 17 uh, years or 17 years. That is beautiful. Uh, in business. And, uh, you know, we have, um, you know, done to, done close to about another uh, eight countries. Um, and plus we have two more in our itinerary. And so, and, and of course, in Ghana, I have some, I have some very good friends, Sister Amakus. With one Africa, yeah, I know you've been there and yeah. stayed there before. Yes, I've been there uh, over 20, 22 times on tour and about another five times on other occasions. Yeah, from two thousand six to now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice area she has there, and and that whole community of of brothers and sisters, brother Cohane and that whole community there. Yeah, that's a nice. Um, the, I always try to get the Dr. John Henry Clark chalet, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, number one, absolutely. That's always a good one. Yes. My, my son, uh, and yeah, 
Yeah, those are the ones I have. And I usually take uh, number two, uh, Marcus Garvey. Mar- yes. And uh, that's funny as you get Dr. Clark. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, um, um, it's in between Cape Coast and Elmina Dungeon. It is right there. So that's a good Yes, spot. literally. Yeah, definitely closer to Elmina since it's in the township of Elmina. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yes, both dungeons are there. Yeah. And then from that point, you can go further, you know, a little northwest to Kamasi and go west to uh, Taikrati. So, you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's a good, that's a good uh, spot in the southern part of, uh, of Ghana. Yeah. So I know you look that's forward it, to that. Man. Also, yes, I've also been to Takarati. Uh Just made my way around the country over the years. Yeah. To many different parts. Right. Yeah, so have I. I've been I've been fortunate enough. I've I've been to the um been to Tamale and to Moli Park, you know. And I've mentioned this before on this program about Moli Park. Uh, you know, the first time I went they had no roads and, and the roads were really bad, you know. They had no paved road. Let me say it that way, because they had roads. They were not paved. And the Chinese came in and they paved the road from Tamale to Moli Park. But what the Chinese also did is they paved a road uh, off of the one that leads to Moli Park to, on, a, on a higher level to another resort, which they have. You know, I don't know if you have an opportunity to see that, but I've never been up to a Moli Park, unfortunately. Okay, not yet. Sure. Yeah, and but you know, I've been to many different national parks, uh, mainly in uh, South Africa and Tanzania. Yeah, Tan- well, I, I look, I look forward to going to Tanzania. I really do. Uh, I know you have that on the. You've been going there for the last three years in November, and this this year is November sixteenth through the twenty seventh, going to Tanzania, and that's just beautiful, man. Mount Kilimanjaro, the Serengeti uh, safaris that you can go on and so forth. Yeah, I tell you, brother, you that's, that's 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 the deal, man. That's the deal. Getting out and just uh, exploring and enjoying nature and enjoying your holiday, your getaway, your vacation, what you work hard for, uh, enjoying the experience with your own brothers and sisters, connecting to your own mother continent. Um, you know, you're putting black dollars in black hands and you're building uh, beautiful relationships. And, you know, you're just getting your mind open for the future. Let me just say and that's this. that's what the journey for lifetimes is about. Oh, yes, definitely. That's the thing that I love about you, Brother Bomani. You try your best to make sure that you know, number one, there's no Caucasians that are on the tour, but you try your uh, best no. when you go to these countries to to make sure that the places that we do stay, the things that we do engage in, uh, our people benefit. Because I know there's a lot of uh, uh, different cultures uh, in Africa in various countries that are running stuff. You know that they have the backing of, of, of people back. At the, in their country, back in wherever, so they're running stuff. But you try to make sure that all the all our brothers and sisters that travel with Africa for the Africans uh, are going to African places where Africans can benefit. Absolutely, and uh, that's what we do, and that's that's the goal. The goal is, uh, you know, this Africa for Africans. That's uh, the goal of Black Cooperative Economics. That's the goal of this Black Empowerment and this us. Uh, Building what we need to build and recirculating our investments and resources and network amongst each other. And 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 to me, brothers and sisters, that's why. Well, I'm going to talk about the uh, comedic trip uh, after the break more in depth. But I I, de- I definitely want to go to Kemet to Egypt with you uh, because I know that just like in some of the tours to Egypt, we have our scholars and those brothers. And sisters, you know, they they plan out a whole itinerary and so forth. Some may or may not use those resources, but you have resources, you know, wherever you've gone and you've established these relationships with Africans, you know, with us, you know, and and, and Kemet is one of them. Because I know uh, when I went to Kemet the first time way back, ooh, about 15 years ago, maybe longer, whatever, you know, and the places I stayed and the and the tour I went on and the people I talked with were not African. You know, they were Egyptians. <laughs> Let me put it that way. They were Egyptians. 
you know, and and I had some discussion with uh, some of them about, you know, that this is really not theirs. You know, in fact, one gentleman who I was talking with in Aswan, you know, he said to me, he said, yeah, you are right. It, it is not ours. You know, we, we came in in the seventh century and 16, six, uh, seventh century and just, you know, just went straight across North Africa, Egypt, Libya, Mauritania, Algeria. We just took it, you know. So, you know, these, these pyramids, these temples, these tombs, no, they are not ours. They're yours, really. But, you know, when you go to malls and, and other things, you see, uh, um, the Egyptian merchants, or when you go to that bazaar that they have, all the Egyptian merchants that are that are selling cartouches and and all kinds of stuff, you know they've taken advantage in, in, of a situation that they've, you know, that they took, and but it is not there; it is ours. But but my suggestion is that you go, you go regardless, and you see for yourself what we have done, because I look at it this way: you see what we have done, and you know that we can do it again. Brother Romani, that's, yeah, that, yeah. that, that's it, brother, and that, that's the only way we're going to build greatness, and we have to show people greatness and connect us to this, the greatest aspects of our, you know, the world we live in, and just keep, you know, keep, you know, keep moving in that strong union, you know, that, and, you know, when, you, you, when you're watching our videos and you see now moving to just big groups of us, move, you, know, move, yeah. you know, moving as a unit, you know, connecting and, some of us have gone on to live, do business in Africa, and do many wonderful things. So that's the you know the network we're looking to build more of, and you know around more people like that, so we can just you know, get things done. You know, be a be a practical people of uh, you know of you know living that vision that we talk about, and not just reading, studying, and just analyzing, and, and just wondering, and just hoping that you know Africa will become what you want it to become. Well, that you got to get into the game. Yeah, and that's why tourism is so impactful. Yes, I agree. Because to me, ultimately, if if we are going to be a people, Africa must be in Africans' hands. Africa's resources must be able to be controlled by Africans. You know, um, I know that a lot of our Africans in the diaspora, some of them are very happy to be where they are, and so be it. I mean, whether it's in Europe, whether it's here, particularly here. Uh, wherever, but ultimately, if we as African people are going to be players in the world instead of pawns, and to be undermined, manipulated, and to be the scourge of this world as they, as the Europeans have always projected us to be, then we must control Africa. Africa must be in the hands of Africans. Africa, just as you say, Africa for the Africans. <laughs> Africa for the Africans. And that's why, to me, I, I, I consistently applaud you and support you because, you know, by helping Africa's, Africans here in the diaspora, whether they're here in the States or wherever they are, go to Africa and to see for themselves, you know, and experience these tours and have the opportunity to uh, have a project that they can invest in if they choose to be, or to be more importantly, to repatriate. You know, that's what we must do. You know, because to me, that's that's for me is the ultimate. That's it, right? That is the business. That's it. That's, it. that's how we have to move, brother. Move strong, and just uh, keep it, you know, keep it going. So I'm always just telling people out there. Family, please um, get your passports. Uh, look more into these schedules. Look more into this uh, taking that journey to Africa, whether it's with us, someone else, or you do a fact find a mission on your own. Get out there, connect, and uh, let's take advantage of these opportunities so we don't sit around and complain and wonder why the Chinese, the Indians, the Lebanese, uh, the Europeans, and other people are there in Africa as the more, most and more successful people taking advantage of all the opportunities that we in the Americas and the African diaspora in general uh, should pos should be probably taking advantage of. But we got to get our A game ready and even just get basic things ready. But I know not all of us are on the same level, but at least start getting passports together. And those of us that are there, you know, I'm always just trying to connect with many of us as possible. Uh, that's why we do these uh, business and investment conference and these, or these uh, 
you know, social networking and gatherings uh, that way we just, you know, connect more together and, you know, work together, build a vision because all we got is us and it's, it's a small number of us that's even into Africa. So it's um, yeah, you're right. a lot more of those things can be done. So that's what we use this journey also to do mm-hmm. uh, because you have uh, in this journey, 17 people, which is the largest group outside of my Ghana group, which is 42, 43. Right. And then we have Tanzania. Last time it was uh, 15 of us and then uh, South Africa, I want to say it was 12 of us. Yeah. And so, and they're trying to build these energies to, you know, where we can just have mo- multiple and flexible different parts in Africa so we can connect and, you know, uh, do business. Uh, mm-hmm. Even have opened up energy to connecting and expanding our journeys to uh, Liberia, uh, which is just another incredible country that was uh, built by our ancestors from the, uh, you know, from the Af- you know, African diaspora, from, from the Americas. We literally, um, you know, built us a foundation 201 years ago where we can build on and uh, and they have they have survived just like other African nations with their civil armaments and you know whatever situation and now in the, in the 21st century you know it's all all about building that future and you know, even that west uh, west coast of Africa you know we have nice connections of different countries and, and so many people have moved in different countries and now we just got to get together and and you know coordinate and organize more business. Like you have an incredible waterways there. So, you know, it's up to us to, to you know, whether it lease ships or build ports and build the tourism, build the, um, you know, the movement, uh, build a connection and, and and so on. So, you know, it's opportunities available, but we just got to be ready to just take advantage of it. So the first thing is always just you know, opening your eyes and making it to Africa and just seeing all the possibilities and enjoying that experience. Yes, I agree. I agree. And you have a number of, of trips, uh, tours upcoming, and you've been to almost um, about a quarter of, of the African countries. You have upcoming, um, once again, Senegal and Gambia, then Ghana, Rwanda, Tanzania, Azenia, South Africa, you know, Liberia, then the Ghana again, and then the Kemet, and I'm quite sure many, many more. And And the purpose is not just that you go as a tourist, you know, the purpose is that you go as you're going home and you're looking at, you know, uh, the possibilities of investing or the possibilities of repatriating. But if you just want to go to relax and enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy our brothers and sisters, please do so, right? Most definitely. You know. And so, that's why we have it all set up for the family. Everything is set for you all on our website at Africa for the Africans dot O R G and we're just making it uh that simple to where once you're on our website you can take a look at all of the tour schedules that we have and uh, you can just process it. And once you get to the tour schedule all you have to do is click on the link and then um you will see a full flow of information from tour schedule um including uh itinerary overview, general terms, uh, visa, information, and uh, tour preparation. And that's, you know, and it's very easy, family. I've been, uh, once again, announcing Africa for the Africans.org, Brother Bomani Tahimba, for many, many years. Um, and I find his website and, and the pictures of the previous tours that he has that you can go check out on um Facebook.com, you know, forward slash Bomani or videos, you know, brothers and sisters, he has um, hours and hours of videos on YouTube.com forward slash Bomani 2007. And and you can check out many of the uh, things that he has done, the places he has gone on video. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's all, everything is right there. It's all up front, you know, in fact, um, Brother Bomani helped me. I was going. I was going to Ghana a few years ago, back in nineteen, and and the website was just tremendous for me. Every all the information I needed, the paperwork, the uh, the shots requirements, and and the visa requirements, and all of all that is right there. In fact, some of the tours. He always how how often do you try to update this website because it's always informative. 
Um, it's updated uh, weekly, daily, weekly. Mm-hmm. Based on whatever needs to be updated, is it's updated on it. So I'll come back from a tour, and I need to put new schedules up. So I have those schedules up ahead of time. Yeah, you do. So everything uh, as of now is updated. And then once I've come in, finish another journey or two, then we just update, do some more updates, and mm-hmm. put some more videos and pictures up on Facebook, YouTube, the popular networks where people have access to this, see the videos and pictures. On an incredible lights, you know, you can just watch the YouTube videos on your big 65, 75 inch <laughs> TV. That's right. And then you just, you know, click on it and then type in, you know, Bomani Tambo, or you know, you can type in just a bunch of different things. The videos will come up, whether it's Africa for the Africans, but mainly this the channel is my name. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, once they get there, they have a lot of playlists. Every single tour that I've done over the last several years, there's a playlist of videos of that entire tour, and that's the first thing you'll see, and then you'll see whatever recent uploads I've done, which is usually uh, since I just get, came back from Ghana and Tanzania, and the Tanzania and Ghana updates as far as videos. And it's, you know, Facebook just got an incredible amount of galleries of all the uh, tours that we've done from 2006 to every single country um, all the way to now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just continuous documentation to let people know we're serious, let people know that uh, you know we want to make sure that, you know, we're getting the best journey with the best connection in Africa and get you prepared in the most incredible and organized way. Now, um, I know that uh, some years ago there was a group that tried to talk about developing a subdivision in Ghana. Unfortunately, I don't know where they're at with that, and I know that you were not intricately involved, but there was some discussion and you kind of backed off of them and and um, is there anything now happening in Ghana where somebody uh, who can travel to Ghana and see or look at a plan if they choose to uh, repatriate uh, to Ghana and there will be a area that is built up uh, with a good sewage, uh, you know, infrastructure, good infrastructure and uh, roads and so forth. Is there anything... Uh, in the works like that, I think there was a um, an, a repatriated or investment. I can't remember the uh, the name of it in Ghana. Yeah, you know, one is that far ahead, but you know, people have options. They have you know, homes that built, communities built already that they can just you know join and purchase into. But if they want to do something more organic, like what we're doing here, the Black Star Pan African Community in Jahadzi, on our 15 and 60 acres, um, um, you know land site uh, as far as building um, you know, our own ecosystem and it's been in black cooperative economics is just not just our community but just around the town that's uh you know that's the opportunity where you know we're just building it as time go along and the more we build the more we'll keep on showing and let people know so they can jump in or you know find out more and mm-hmm. they can be a part of the infrastructure development but that's another big thing that we you know we're pushing towards so the main thing that uh, we tell people that you know we also have another one that's um in Prom Prom, um, one of our developers, Craig yeah. Norman, uh, it's called Stadium View Estate. And in that's Pram right Pram? Here, um, that's Pram, Pram Okay, cool. Yeah. They, they give you ocean access and everything, this uh, beautiful location. Yeah. So those are the two, um, you know, that's um, our partner in this, and those are the options that we have for people. And if people wanted something more ready to go and ready to build with infrastructure, uh, mm-hmm. that's what I would recommend, uh, my brother Craig Norman. The plots are a little higher. But um, they put more into the infrastructure, mm-hmm. so that's you know, I tell people you can get in now or get in later. But everything is adjusted based on development. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, when you said Pram Pram, made me think of my brother, brother Jerry Johnson. I know you visited visited brother Jerry Johnson in the ancestral the ancestral wall. Uh yes, I've known him from 2007 and mm-hmm. built our connection here in Atlanta. I know his parents, and uh, you know, part of the same connection uh, over here in the West and, and you know, we know, know right. some of the people. So we just, uh, you know, connected with him. And since he's been building, what he's been building over there, I've been visiting him over the last several years and just, you know, showcasing his documentation of the ancestral wall, which is incredible 90 plus portraits of different ancestors, African ancestors around the world. And in, in the show there, and then he just explains, um, it's illustrated, but he also explains in detail, uh, their contribution to you know black uh, civilization. Mm-hmm. He also is building a, a a library, and I know when I visited him, which was a, f- 
few, quite a few years ago, you know, it was just a shell up at the time, you know, so I'm not quite sure he's progressed since then. Do you know if the library is pretty much completed? No, the library is not completed. I was okay. there at the end of uh, last year. Uh, he's uh, building three floors now, so um, okay. and the framework of it is in place as far as the um, mm-hmm. you know, the bricks and and, and it's built up to where you can see, you know, the, the you know, from the foundation all the way up to each floor. Uh, so as I go back, you know, that's what we keep on doing. We just record, document, and show update and what you'd see over the 16 years is, you know, you know, the building of uh, you know our African diaspora reconnection to the African continent, right? And our influence and our connection and our contributions uh, to the future of Africa. Mm-hmm. It's been incredible from you know from schools to business development to communities to you know, general investment to this us moving in along you know, you know different countries and moving in in different places and just building our energy. And mm-hmm. some of us have tried and have done well. Some of us have tried and failed, but the most important thing, you know, we have showed our presence and we have showed, you know, our commitment. I say, yeah, so now we just got to move forward stronger and more organized in this, you know, be, you know, be on a, you know, a similar code of this a- accomplishment. I mean, you know, you want to make sure that all of us, when we go to Africa, we succeed and we're clear about what we're getting ourselves into. So that's what this journey opens your mind up to right. and give you full clarity before you make certain decisions. That's so why we, you know, key thing we talk about business and investment in this general education on just, you know, what to do and how to move around. And then you know, usually we have people in the different countries. So, and then we have a tour staff there that's usually, the, you know, you, you, you know, you best for your people because you know they have to deal with a lot of things for you. And if they can get those things done, they can help you with many other things. Uh, so, now always leave people in good hands, especially if people want to come back and reconnect to the different countries. That's beautiful. That is great, Brother Bomani. I'm tell you, you're a tremendous uh, resource. As far as I'm concerned, you're a tremendous resource based on your your mindset and your heart of helping Africa and helping Africans connect with Africa. And, and to me, that's important. Because, I mean, you know, there, there, there are some tour packages. All it is is a visit, you know. All it is is you go there and, and, and you see the sights and you – lay on the beach or whatever, some nightlife and this, that, and the other, some shopping, you know, like it, it, all this is touristy and then you come back. But with you, it's, it is, truly is a trip of a lifetime because you are making these connections. You are establishing relationships. You are helping Africans reconnect, you know. Uh, I know the Senegal trip starting next week, and you said you're going to go to the uh, statue, and I'm quite sure brothers and sisters who are listening, if you know, if you, you know, Google Senegal, you see the beautiful statue of the man, the woman, and the child. You know, it's huge. You know, it's a, it's a big tourist attraction. And you said you can go up in there, huh? And you can look. Yes, uh, you, have a, you have a museum, a multiple floor museum, and also you have an elevator that takes you to the top of the furthest part and the head of the man, which is the highest point of the statue. Man, yeah. Or, my, or monument. Yeah, well, one of my, hopefully one of my tours or one of my trips will be to to Senegal. Because I definitely want to see. Do you visit uh, the the university, uh, uh, Sheikh Anta Diop? Uh, yes, we drive through the University of Sheikh Anta Diop, uh, and that's not too far from our hotel, and that's uh, doing our city tour. So doing the city tours, we just try, we just uh, do our best to get to whatever main university is around. And just, you know, as simple as that is, it's important because, you know, when people talk about a higher level of education and and just certain infrastructure, you know, people make it seem like, you know, uh, it just doesn't exist. So we're just show, here to show the best and the finest parts of Africa and uh, Senegal is just a well-developed country. You just have to, you know, you just have to illustrate it, you know. And it's the first country that I went to in Africa. Uh, I went there in March of, it was March 18th of 2004. That was 19 years ago. I was 26 now, uh, 45. Mm-hmm. And that was my first journey, and that was my first time ever going into the African Holocaust dungeons. Um, right. 
at Gory Island and that's Gory Island, me. And yeah. that's how we do these incredible journeys where uh, every country that we go to, we showcase the African Holocaust. And I always tell people it's very important because it's part of our roots and culture. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, especially if you're doing a roots and culture or business and investment tour, it's relevant to you know what you need to know and what needs understanding, and, and just kind of build strong from right. You know, so, um, it's um, you know some people like to hide from slavery and run from it and make it just disappear into thin air like it didn't exist and things like that. But it's Mm-hmm. Um, I always say to to those people who want to say that because you know uh, you know sometimes people look up and like you know this brother is is taking people to these places and you know, I tell them yeah it's a part of it uh, because um, you know what about the uh, white European Jews you know but they make sure that nobody forget mm-hmm. the Holocaust and what they do is, right. which is more important they make sure that they mm-hmm. use it as a formulation regardless of whatever people may think about what happened what didn't happen and how it really is. They use that situation uh, to organize themselves to where, you know, they, you know, they stay on code to where they, you know, to where they're more of a dominant force and protect themselves, and also, you know, end up just you know, investing in sectors where other people may not want to invest in, mm-hmm. and that could, you know, that should be us as a people. So I was telling people look look at it in the bright light of just uh, you know building a positive future um, and just embracing you know, the ancestor struggle. Cause they've been through it, uh, so even if you have to this, you're taking a long visit across Africa, right. and you're on a right. 20 day journey. You know, you know, what, you know, the site you know you visit may only take a few hours. You know, we can at least you know show that to our ancestors, mm-hmm. and even myself, who have been to so many of them so many times. You know, it's never about myself now because now you you know you have people that you're accommodating, and it's up to you to you know to educate people and put them in that direction and say yes this is important and we're going to keep it on schedule now people can choose to do what they want to do if they want to get on the bus and go or not that's always up to everyone on anything that we do on schedule you know once you pay your money it's up to you to d- decide if you want to stay or go but we always have the bus available and we always have conferences available and the schedule is available so that's what we're doing is a schedule and we we definitely always Recommend everyone to the highest level take their time, read through the schedule, especially the tour overview, which give you the numbers, what's included, what's not included, and then the itinerary, which give you the day to day of what you're doing. I'm also telling anyone if you're going to spend these monies on these packages, make sure you read all of our packages, include flights. Uh, you can choose not to do the flight option, but include flights and full accommodations. And, uh, you know, sometimes people sell these things and it's the same price as what we do. And I tell people, no, check it out. Our flights are included from wherever you are in the U.S. And if someone want to come from somewhere else, they can just choose to get their own flights and just do the rest of the package. So we just have 100% flexibility to accommodate people. Uh, and uh, you know, once we get there, we definitely want to make sure that we record all of the historical places and uh, keep on pushing that narrative that our ancestors didn't fight and die and survive you know, for nothing. You know, it was for us to build on their foundation to where we build. Our new vision in Africa, this is the 21st century, you know what I mean? Uh, Garvey was 100 years ago. The Liberian Reconnection was 200 years ago. So we have perfect model, we have perfect models in place that did what they, you know, were supposed to do, build a foundation. So and here and, and hence, uh, here we are now, using tourism as a way to connect the business and investment and how you can, you know, literally just connect the Africa and be successful and just make it work. Right, and I think that's the way to do it. I mean, you know, Africa is emerging, you know, and although um, because of a number of factors of climate change and, of course, colonialism and neo-colonialism and despots and so forth, there are some problems, no doubt, you know, but Africa is emerging and Africa is young. The population of Africa is young. It's one of the youngest populations of any group of people, any cultural group of people, you know. And and what that means is, is that we have a future if we take it and embrace it and develop it. We have a future, you know. But so many of our people, like I said, there's so many of our people that, you know, they don't want to deal with Africa, you know. They're happy to be Americans, you know. They're happy to go to Europe, and 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 go to some other places, you know, and and I'm my my contention is is that just as Marcus Garvey felt that Africa is our salvation, and he would not 
give up a continent for an island. You know, I know I'm I know I'm Jamaican, and I know I'm I'm, I'm born in King Anne's Bay, Jamaica, but I would never give up a continent. You know, for an island, the continent is what's happening, and so we need Absolutely. to break and that. It's, it's our birth of Black African civilization, and it's our, you know, it's you know, it's it's our complete connection. You know, mm-hmm. uh, people want to run away from it, but that what that's what has to happen now. You know, we have to have that, that connection to where, you know, we're strong together as a people, and that's why it's, you know, people sometimes misunderstand. You know, the. Uh, the, the vehicle of pan Africanism to build nationhood. Yes. You know, when back you know, Marcus Garvey had that inspiration, uh, you know, the people you know talk about you know, you know, building this future nation, and you know, and that's what has to happen. So, uh, for those who can do it, join us, and those who can stay here in America and build the black empowerment that we need. That yes. way, we can do business more global. So we build basically a global black business uh, pipeline. Yes, and empower ourselves just like every other nations of people mm-hmm. have been doing and still doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, now they're just putting that energy now more so on the African continent. So either we show up to compete, or we're looking at a new Africa where it's you know because right now the like the Lebanese that's that's their, the West Africa is their headquarters. And you look at the Indians. You know, they dominate East Africa and then, you know, so on and so on across yeah. different parts of Africa. Yeah, I know. I know you've been to all these parts of Africa and, and yeah, every I know, region. yeah, because <laughs> I know that the uh, Indians are going back into Uganda when Idi Amin Dada kicked them out of Uganda back, you know, in, in the 70s and so forth to make Uganda strong and make Uganda for Africa for Africans. You know, now they're starting to move back in. Of course, the Koreans are in. Of course, the in, the Indians, the Chinese, the the Arabs, the Caucasians, the Europeans. Everybody wants to be in Africa, but Africans. You know, exactly. That's why we have to, you know, we push that brand. But even so, the ones who don't, they don't. They have to just. They can't just, you know, be on the sidelines or just, you know, or just be spectators. They have to get into something. So, you know, while we're here in America, and the, the, you know, say the 99% of us say we're not making a move to Africa. Well, it's 99% of us. What are we going to do in America? So that's always my question. Uh, so I always tell people don't make excuses not to compete. You know, and so mm. because so people sometimes they're focused. They're like, well, money, you and you know, the network of people, all you ever talk about is Africa. Africa, you know, we need you out here. I was like, well, you have 99% of the population of people that's even stronger than us in certain things, you know, why don't you organize them? Why are you so focused on what we do, mm-hmm. which is a mission that has to happen? You know, uh, we need more people to come out there and connect. You know, that's how I was trying to get, um, you know, one of our good brothers, uh, uh, go black to just take some of the people on his network to connect to, you know, different parts of Africa. Yeah. You know, that way, you know, we can have the numbers of more people interested and more people say, you know, let's do this together. You know, it could be, you know, together means 5, 10, 15, 20, 100, 1,000. You know, whatever amount right. of people. Is whatever the amount. Have it keep growing. Have it keep growing. Yes. Yeah, but you can do it in a small numbers of people. It could be just be you and your family or you and your five brothers or, you know, five sisters or, you know, a, you know, a small black organization that's from here. Like, exam, example, the you know, the modern-day uh, UNIA ACL, you know, have their connection in sure. modern-day Liberia now, which is a good connection. Mm-hmm. That's, a good, that's a good example. Uh, so, you know, and... The more of us work on these things, then, you know, when we be in Africa, then, you know, the better we can say, you know, I'm working on this, you're working on this, let's connect. I you say, know, but, I say. So, well, know, it's a form of action that has to happen, just like once we build our technology and business center uh, there uh, on our community, Black South Pan-African community. Now, you're looking for black-owned empires, enterprises, or just ent- enterprises in general, so you can do business with them, whether it's tech support or whether it's business support or, you know, or any form of this. You know, business that could, you know that you can provide in a technology and business operation. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, you know these are the things that can and you know will happen regardless of some people participate or not. But you know, telling people why not just join what we need to do so we can have a better and more and and even better future opportunities for our children. I you know, because that's what it is. It's like you know, you look at the the children in South Korea, look at them in India, you look at them in Japan, mm-hmm. look at them in China, look, look at their competitiveness. So, now, everyone wants to get all these 
tech and engineering jobs and everything. So the level of competition is high. So when they're competing on the world stage, you know, they're automatically just, they're dominant in these fields. And plus they're backed by countries that have, you know, that are, you know, not only just, you know, world powers where they have their, you know, but they're also countries who are going to invest in their people to make these moves because they know that it's a, you know, it's a global game. It's no longer, I'm in this country, in this country. You know, you know, look at, you know, look at the white guy, uh, Marriott. He has uh, Marriott all over the six continents that we yes, know. Yes, all over the world, Marriott Hotels. You know what I mean? So I tell it's people, don't forms. tell me as a black man not to enterprise and build relationships and business in Africa and other black parts of the world when everyone else is doing it. You know, mm-hmm. so, I'm, you know, because you, uh, you may not be on YouTube like that, but... Uh, it's like a lot of negative narrative about Pan-Africanism, but what I just explained to people, that's the, you know, that's the vision of Pan-African. That's how Pan-Africanism get things done. You know, people mm-hmm. saying, that, hey, uh, you're so worried about Pan-Africanism, but the people in Africa are not worried about Pan-Africanism. People always w- worry about what other people are doing. You have to learn to do what you need to do to influence and empower your own people. Not everybody can get up and do certain things on a leadership momentum. You know, some people it's easier to sit down in their basement, play with their keyboards, and make these fake accounts and hate on what, whatever you're doing on YouTube. It's actually just real funny, and uh, you know, because uh, you know, it, it tells you that you're moving in the right direction. You know, because you know, some people may say, "Hey, you know, this person is doing this well. You know, who stopped you from doing this?" You know what I mean, you know, but yeah. at the same time, too, I won't. You know, you can always call me, and I can always give you some game, and we can always just talk and connect together. Right so on. it's always just putting the elements right of reaching out to people and say, hey, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Are you going to, you know what I mean? Because, you know, but, you know, regardless of whatever you decide to do, the the people that we're dealing with in the rest of the world, they're not going to stop doing what they're doing. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, we're going to take a break. We're going to dominate, dominate and take yeah. over Africa. No, we ain't going to let that happen, man. We ain't going to let it happen. We're going to, yeah, we're going to. We're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, there'll be more discussion with Brother Bomani Tahimba, Africa for the Africans, the the, uh, the lineup of, of, of tours he has upcoming and how you can get involved. And uh, and more importantly, you too, brothers and sisters, can take a trip of a lifetime. You're listening to African Perspectives here on the Motherland Media Network on timeforanawakening.com and blacktalkradionetwork.com. Brothers and sisters, you stay with us. We'll be right back. You are listening to African Perspectives with host Brother Oshi on Time for an Awakening Media, part of the Black Talk Radio Network. For podcasting or live program scheduling, hit them up at timeforanawakening at gmail.com.
Creepin', the Pookie Bell Band. Creepin'. <laughs> yeah. Brothers and sisters, you're listening to African Perspectives here on the Motherland Media Network on Time for One Awakening dot com and Black Talk Radio Network dot com. The Pookie Bell Band. Yeah. I always like to find some good music. And if you got some good music, let me know. You know drop me a line. Give me a call or text me or whatever. Okay, because I'm always available for you, family. That's for sure. Yeah. My guest, of course, today is Brother Bomani Tahimba of Africa for the Africans. And the lineup that he has uh, of tours upcoming are just outstanding, family. This uh, next week, Thursday the 30th to April 9th, going to Senegal and Gambia. May 24th to June 5th to Ghana. July 20th to the 30th. Rwanda, November 16th through the 27th, Tanzania, December 24th to January 4th, 2024, Azenia, March 29th to April 9th, Liberia, July 11th to the July 23rd, Ghana, December, no, excuse me, November 21st, to December 2nd, 2024, to Kemet. Great trips upcoming. And brothers and sisters, just as he said, you can go on the website. These are all links. You can put your cursor on it, and they'll give you the details of that particular trip, all the information that is necessary for you, itinerary and so forth. Brother Bomani maintains this uh, website, updates it, you know, consistently. You know, he'll, I mean, right away, Brother Bomani, you, you seem like you, as soon as you get back, you, you put the pictures up of that tour, don't you? Uh, yes, that's what I do, man. I, you know, this is the Office of Bomani Technology. That's all we do. <laughs> right Technology on. and business uh, administration and right service on. support, all that good stuff. And mm -hmm. did our own business affairs and technology affairs in order to where we can just market ourselves at the highest level and just showcase our own network and just put things on the, the general network like Facebook and YouTube and just show, you know, you're going to show the world this is what we're doing and what we're into and what we're building and, you know, regardless of whatever is going on and, uh, you know, and just uh, moving out, you know, moving us forward. So it seems like a lot of backwards movements and a lot of people are stuck on from reparations to stuck on what's going on in other, you know, in other countries, um, now, Ukraine and Russia and stuck in, in other parts of the place and uh, focusing on taking their next uh, European vacation. Mm -hmm. So we present Africa for the Africans and we present uh, something relevant uh, to right. us as a people and something that can build black economics and something that can build a network for us as a people. Mm -hmm. well, so you know, have to get some things done and you know, and it goes beyond tourism. And that's why I talk about uh, repatriation or pan-African communities and I talk about this competing in different in, in investment sectors, you know, building more industries in Africa. You know, the land is there, the opportunities are there. Yeah. You know, we just got to, you know, put together our game plan and make it work. So this is, you know, this is a good start. And, and all, the, all those countries that I just named, you know, those are some of the best countries where we have our people living and doing business also, mm -hmm. including Egypt. Yeah, including Egypt, because you mentioned the sister that uh, went on a tour with you now. She is uh, repatriated to to Egypt. She lives in 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 Kemet, and she is the one that is going to help set up this particular tour, correct, for next year. Uh, absolutely, she's the on ground person, a uh, tour operator, uh, on the ground, and uh, you know we, they just organize everything based on what you're looking to do. You know, so all these schedules I have, uh, you know, are put together, and I have people on the ground uh, that uh, runs that operation, and you know. They just uh, get us around the country, you know, from the tour guide to the driver to the assistant. Uh, just work with us for the duration of while we're there and get us prepared before we even get there. Uh, so and then I just take care of all the business and administrative stuff and get the groups uh, ready, organized. We do monthly conference calls and always have live streams and just consistent video updates from previous tours. So it's an ongoing, continuous energy to showcase and show people you know, before they make any decisions, you know, look at what we have to offer and compare it. Right. Uh, cause the goal is just to always just give our people the best 
and help them with everything. You know, I mean, like I mentioned, passport, visas, uh, consultation, all those things. You know, we can help people with. So also too, I mean, the people who you uh, once once an individual decides he's looking at all the things you offer and makes a a, a don't um, down payment on a particular tour. You 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 uh, have periodic. Um, um, on on on, I'm trying I'm trying to say you meet with the people and talk about the trips and what is, uh, you know what is a uh, 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 assured so they can make sure that when the trip comes out everything is taken care of they have all their stuff in order they're ready to make that trip of a lifetime they have the visa they have their p- a passport they have all their documentation and things they're going to take with them they, it's all there you 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 talk to them previously when you have some particular meetings with them on online to make sure that they're uh, yes, prepared. Uh, you have direct meetings and conversation with each individual and also you just have group uh, meetings as far as um, you know you know our, our conference calls uh, public conference calls anyone can get on and then we have a private conference call we, you know usually a few weeks before we travel uh, we do just another private conference call we just do introductions uh, you know Usually it's a Zoom call and everybody show their face and we just all talk and communicate and just go over the schedule. And then also we have our, the book that's dedicated to the tour that goes that goes through every aspect of what you're going to be doing on the tour. So it's uh, it's preparation to the highest level. And then we have a preparation list on all of the tour links to where it gives you a 1 to 30 points of uh, basically re- reminder and departure information and just preparation details in general. Outstanding to make sure that hey, you know what you're going to get into. You know what you're going to what's going to be happening. You're prepared for it. I mean, I I, I remember when I went to Ghana for the first time, and 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 the beauty of that is I read a lot about it, you know. Um, and so when I touched down and kissed the kissed the ground that I knew that I was back home, and and I went to a few places and seeing Kwame Nkrumah's statue and so forth. I, I, I know this. I've read about this. So I became so, you know, happy to be there and, 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 and enjoying the culture, enjoying the atmosphere, you know. It was just like I've been here, you know, because I did some study. I did some looking into. I went online. All that is all that's there for you, family. All the things that Brother Bomani is presenting to you, it's all there for you. You know, just please take advantage. Yeah. So um, yes. I'm going to want to talk about um, let's for for a minute the the uh, Egyptian tour because November 21st to December 2nd of 2024. I know it's well over a year and a half from now, but I'm looking at really helping you to promote this one. I mean, I do. I mentioned Africa for the Africans at every program, but this one specifically, because you know, uh, back in the '80s, back in the '80s, our scholars got together, and and there was a home going, us leaving out of uh, not leaving us coming from the U.S. and other parts, going to Kemet, going to Egypt. There was literally hundreds of us, you know, and basically. You know, going to the place where there was African high culture, where there was uh, the zenith, the apex of African high culture, and we basically come back to claim it as our own because it is, and and that's what the association for uh, came about. The association for the study of classical African civilizations came about. The ASCAC Association uh, on that trip, of course, where the Great scholars, Dr. Clark, Dr. Asa Hilliard, uh, Dr. Milana Karinga, many of the great scholars on that trip, and many brothers and sisters took that trip. I know of at least six people. I wasn't on that trip, unfortunately, but I know of six people who were on that trip, and they mentioned how great it was and, and the things that they did. They had study uh, uh, events at night. So instead of being on the nightlife, they had more, st- because it was a, it was a study program was a fact-finding thing. It was like going home, you know. I'm not saying that this trip is like that, but what I am saying is that here, brothers and sisters, there's an opportunity to go to Kemet, you know, and see for yourself. You have an opportunity to see the monuments, see the pyramids, see Hori Market or the Sphinx, 
See, go take a trip, a plane down to Aswan, and then sail down the Nile. You know, from that point, and and many of the, many of the places along that along the Nile. But look at Abu Simbel, Abu Simbel, which of course uh, is a a great monument to uh, the Pharaoh Ramesses II of the 18th dynasty. I mean, just phenomenal. So all of these things are available, you know? So brothers and sisters, you can talk with Brother Bomani Tahimba. Uh, there are a number of you in the queues. Just hit star twice. If you have a question or comment or concern, hit star twice. If not, dial 215-490-9832. 215-490-9832. Absolutely, brother. I appreciate you sharing information about the Egypt journey. And always, there's no much respect and uh, and love uh, to our ancestors and the people who know literally just build energy for us to just understand and be clear about these uh, you know, these connections in Africa. So, you know, and as I tell people that, you know, this is the 21st century and we're going to build up on what uh, was put in place for us as a people. So the, the continuation and the growth of that becomes now investments and then, you know, we do our... Uh, Egypt tour to where we just add aspects of just being out in the Red Sea. You know, we have a water park, so if you know the children are coming or just oh, that's grown a, children, okay, that's nice. you can yeah. also just enjoy paradise, take the boat out and things like that. Uh -huh. And also uh, join us for a business and investment conference or networking and talk about uh, you know things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So looking to this, uh, keep it uh, strong to where we just have representation and energy just all over the globe, as I talked about earlier. Uh, for us to build a global black business pipeline. Good. Because, you know, we're the people everywhere, so, you know, we should be naturally represented in just being, you know, having our business enterprises and empires across the world, just like everybody else. I say. I say. 334, uh, 334, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Bubbles. You can hear me? I sure can. Go ahead, Brother Ted. Oh, okay, yeah, and, and good evening to you. Uh, to your guest, well, good afternoon, rather. Um, the question that I have is, um, I'm a novice. I've, you know, only read, saw pictures, and never had the experience to cross the international uh, time zone into another region, particularly into Africa like that. So I, I, um, I'm kind of curious about total, how much money would I have to um, have allotted for a a complete trip like that. Uh, yes, uh, the tours for 2023 and 2024, uh, full package includes flights uh, and full accommodations in the country. Uh, it's $4,000, uh, and that's the Liberia tour. And then uh, most of the tours are 4200 And then the tour that's in the more pricier season uh, are 4400 where tickets are just like over $2,000. Uh, so that's the big issue with the numbers that you hear as uh, uh, the tickets uh, on airlines are quite, uh, account for a good percentage of that, uh, from 40 to 50 percent. Uh, so that's um, the price ranges that uh, we have. And then um, okay. what you have to also think about is they're spending money. And then some countries require visas that could be from anywhere from 60 to $200, depends on the country. Okay. And some countries don't require visas also. So okay. we have a list of eight, eight different countries and a few things uh, varies. But if you're asking me about what country should you join us on, uh, you know, I would recommend like our Ghana made journeys that we do um, and also the Liberia journeys that we do in the spring. Uh, just to give you a nice, uh, you know, those are the two most historical countries that's relevant to us uh, in, in the Americas. Uh, so that's what we have set up and then it portrays a lot of the history and a lot of connections. And so that opens up um, you know, the energy to this, getting a feel in Africa, because the more relevant your your journey is, you know, the better outlook you can have on it. And not saying that some of the other countries are not relevant, because we make all of them relevant. It's just these two are, are the key, and the ones that I usually recommend uh, people take. Uh, they just ask me personally. But uh, it's just up to individuals, because it's also based on the time of the year when the schedules are available. Let's see. Um, there's energies, high energies in the Erythrea, uh, eastern part of the country. You all won't travel uh, near there at all, right? What uh, what country? 
Eritrea. Eritrea. Uh, or, or Eritrea. Eritrea. Yeah, that's uh, far uh, East Africa. No, uh, in East Africa, what I have is uh, Rwanda uh, and Tanzania, and in that's North it. Africa, we have Egypt. And as time goes along, you know, you create new schedules, but uh, you have to focus on you know, a, a few uh, of what you're doing at the time. I see. I see. Okay. Then, well, uh, then, I mean, uh, one of those places is Mount Kilimanjaro, right? The uh, mountain at the base of the moon. I would love to visit. Yeah, that's Tanzania. Uh, that's Tanzania. That's Tanzania. Yeah, that's Tanzania. You can go Tanzania. there. Sorry, 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 sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so about ten thousand dollars, I guess, all together is something that would I would have to look. Yeah, the tours are the tours are four thousand, at uh, the least expensive, and then. Four thousand two hundred and four thousand four hundred, but then, but okay. know that these are all inclusive tours. So, uh, see, like, the, like the Egypt tours, and most of the Egypt tours, the Egypt tours include your visa, and also it includes uh, your meals, and includes um, this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's basically all inclusive as you can. And the rest of the tours, uh, they just don't include lunch. So I it's um, majority of tours paid for in the package. Uh, to make it just as you know, uh, reasonable for you. That's why I'm always telling everybody to read what's included in the package. That way you know, because some people get packages and then the flights are not included and they just can't believe that they pay this one for a tour package and the flight's not included. Right. But people do us like that. Uh, but different right. people put different aspects on things. I don't have third-party people I work with. I just deal with direct people. So I have my tour guides. I have the, the people that we deal with in the hotels and you know, the airlines itself and all the work that needs to be done, you know, we, you know, we do it and... Everything else is just between our network, uh, so it just gives you a, a great opportunity just to be more reasonable, more competitive. Which is, that's what we are as a people, and that's what business is about: yeah. being competitive yeah. and providing people with the best experience and going above and beyond. So we've survived, you know, and you know now we're at uh, 17 years and looking to really just get whoever is looking to connect and just tell them that there's payment plans available. And you can okay. just pace yourself from a one-year point of view and start a year ahead or a year and a half. And okay. uh, you know, if you change your mind, we can just always move you on another journey or make it work for you. That's our, our goal. And we're absolutely and completely flexible and available. Very good. Very good. Thank you so very much, brother, for that information. Oh, brother yeah. Ted. And thank you, brother Ocean. Oh, you're welcome, brother Ted. And believe me, man, I, I suggest that you go to, as I always say, africafortheafricans.org. And, and then yes. click on some of the trips that he has because you can get more detail and there's videos. Go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Uh -huh. There's some great video that he has on all these previous tours. So you can basically take that tour with the family. You know, just watch through some of our, some of our well over an hour, hour and a half, you know, of, okay. of the events that, they, that took place on that particular tour. Uh, many of them, and 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 I agree with Brother Bomani. I've always said if you want to take a trip to Africa, you should go to Ghana first, either Ghana or Liberia. I I, su I, su I suggest Ghana because of the history of it and my understanding of it. And and believe me, the people are beautiful. Uh, there there's no communication problems because it's former British, you know. But it's a, but it's it'll be a great tour. It'll be a great tour for you. Very good. Thank you so very much. Uh, All right, my brother. Uh, uh, keep okay. listening. Thank you, you sir. You bet. 202, 202. Good afternoon. 202. All right. I will come back to you. 323, 323. Good afternoon. Hello, can you hear me? Ken, go ahead. Uh, yeah, my name is Juma Rafiki. I've traveled with Bomani several times uh, to the African continent. Well, thank you, brother, and welcome. Welcome to the program. Well, greetings, uh, Juma. Appreciate you, brother, man. You're one of my, you know, my VIP uh, you know, tour members. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> yeah. you know, this is one of our best brothers. Right on. I'm I, glad you I, called. I'm just wanted to say, man, that, uh, you know, this brother is a pioneer at what he's doing to try to raise the consciousness and, and, uh, and, um, to help black people in America to reestablish themselves on the richest continent on the planet. That's right. That's right. And that, and, um, and you're absolutely right. Whoever said that, you know, when you start to, uh, go to visit the African continent, that you should visit, uh, Ghana first. And for me, it's, 
you should, I think you should be looking at it as a rite of passage to, to go through the slave castle. Yeah. You have to revisit that trauma to reestablish, yeah. to help as part and parcel to reestablish your African consciousness. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right? I agree. And, um, and so when I went with Bomani first in 2019, man, that was not only a beautiful, a traumatic experience, but it was also part of the beautiful experience of being on the continent. Yeah. Um, I feel like I had been on this journey my whole life since the time I was a teenager, but it was only when I heard about Bomani Tayemba through LIB radio and I had to meet the man in person. So I literally went to his house with the check in hand <laughs> and, um, right on. And, and I've never regretted it. I'm going back again with him next year. Um, uh, what can I tell you, man? His tour is what is, is, I can't imagine any better tours than his because it's all inclusive. One payment, you take your little spending money. He takes care of everything. I know, I know, I agree with you because I've seen video of what Brother Brother Bomani has done. I've been, you know, connecting with Bro Brother Bomani since I've I've been here eight years. I've been here in Atlanta eight years, and uh, I've been working with Brother Bomani, he's been on this program so many times and, and that any time that he has a good trip uh, upcoming and, and either before he goes or after he comes back, I have him on the program. So let the brothers and sisters know for all those who are listening, because this, this is uh, internet radio. It goes anywhere. It goes around the right. world, you know. And so right. you, you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity by connecting with Bomani Tahimba, Africa for the Africans, to take that kind of trip of a lifetime, just as you have, just as this have you had, and 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 myself. I haven't gone with Brother Bomani, but his website has helped me. I've gone to Africa a couple times since, and and I and I'm definitely plan to go to this uh, uh, trip to Kemet to Egypt. I'm looking forward to that to to hanging yeah. with him. Yeah, that should be a good trip. I would say one more thing, and then I'm going to get off the air. I think that the other thing that makes him so distinctive and unique among all, any black tour operators to go to the African continent is that he is a staunch Pan-Africanist and a Garveyite. I say. And Garvey had laid down the template for how we should be thinking about ourselves in a, in a, in a, in a global way, and Africa being the motherland, for us to repatriate to because land and resources is, is at the crooks of our freedom. That's right. You can't right. have freedom without land and resources. That's right. Right? And, and although we have maladaptively adjusted to living in this, in this colonialist environment, you know, um, we will never ever be able to experience the level of freedom and um, spiritual freedom and economic freedom and empowerment until we find our way back home. I say. So I think, I think Bomani, man, I, I feel blessed um, to have met him. Um, you know, I'm 70 years old really soon and I'm hoping to, to, uh, to take future trips with him in the future, man. And I just really, really praise that brother, man. Right on. What was your name, dear brother? Uh, Juma Rafiki, brother. Right on, Juma. Yeah, my name is uh, Oshi. And uh, Oshi. please, man, you are welcome on this program any and every time because you're saying the right things, brother. Believe me. This, thank, this program, thank you this, very much. This, this program is about independence, self-determination, liberation, and sovereignty for African people. Our motto is mm -hmm. Pan-Africanism or perish, unify or die. Okay. That's true. So give us yeah. continue to yes, be a listener. Oshi, appreciate you, man, and um, thanks, uh, Juma. Uh, you know, you've been uh, to Ghana with us. Uh, you've been to um, Senegal and the Gambia, and you've been to uh, Tanzania with us. Uh, so four incredible countries, and um, right you know, on. Telling people that these are our brothers and sisters. That's you know about the movement and live out. And uh, Juma, also thank you for sharing those uh, wonderful Africa for African postcards. You know, we always need as much energy as possible. You know. I'm, yeah, man, I'm still putting them out out here. Right on. Right on. Hey, man, I'm gone, y'all. All right. For the Africans. All right, peace, my All right, brother. Take care, brother, and I'll link you back out later also. Right yeah. on. We, that's a great call. Thank you so much, brother. I hope you can call in again sometime just to listen, man. That's great. Yeah. 
Let me see if my brother uh, Rick. And that's there. what we do, uh, brother Oshi. We uh, impact the lives of our people because you know when you look at it, think about uh, you know some of our people work hard, uh, uh, work hard for thirty to forty years, you know, and then you know, and you know, so it's up to us to give them you know nice uh, experience. Sure. So you know, it's tourism because they also you know need to enjoy the mm. beauty and the wonderful energy. You know, right. You know, it's you know, so it's it's a balance uh, also. You know, and you're getting, you know, China, if, you, if you're doing some a- analytics and trying to put in the numbers of, of uh, how people get the most of a journey, you know, this would be it, the journey of a lifetime to Africa, dedicated to us, our brothers and sisters in the Amer- America, the African national yeah. and this uh, pan-African brothers in general around the world. And see, for me, that's why I would rather go with you than just any other kind of tour, because you have the sense of the Africa flavor you know you want to connect you are a pan-africanist you are african and you want to connect and that's me and so i i wouldn't i wouldn't look at going to africa as a tourist i look at africa going to africa as going home and connecting with brothers and sisters you know connecting with family looking at what 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 is the sense of possibilities for repatriation? Looking for the sense of possibilities in terms of investment. That's how I look at it. You know, yeah, absolutely. Tourism is the is the vehicle, and it's kind of like when we talk about Pan Africanism is the vehicle to build nationhood. That's right. You know, so it's just you know us just using the aspects of what we have and using what our ancestors have built because they did great uh, historical and roots and culture journey. But when now we're talking about business investment repatriation. And us just competing, uh, but we couldn't have you know moved in this direction without you know their vision or what they built up. Just like Liberia, wouldn't be able to just make our move to connect into Liberia without that uh, historical mm-hmm. connection from our people over 200 years ago. Right, I say. And, and even having the vision of this us organizing Africa, you know, people talk about Garvey didn't make it to Africa, but he influenced probably more of us to go to Africa than any other. Yeah, you know, as a you know, as a man. That's right, he did, and I agree with you. He did. He never set foot on Africa. That's so deep. But he's yeah. the greatest inspiration for us. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, so that's amazing. So uh, we know we do what we can do in our generations. And, you know, now you know, we see that we live in a more competitive world. And, you know, the way the American school system is, you know, it's I, you know, I question it all the time because I look at this, what, you know, the children in Southeast East Asia is doing, you know. So yeah, it's, um, you know, you're looking at, um, you know, People like to talk about warfare and things like that, and you know, you know, think about the the world of this global competition to where your children are just outdone based on the fact that they don't have the proper education to compete. There's business like you know, that's where most of our children in Africa fail. I mean, when you go to well, the community it, that it, well, we live in, here's a good example. Go here's a good example in South Africa. You know, the the South African brothers and sisters are hating on the Ghanaians and the Nigerians for coming to South Africa, taking the technical jobs. But the bottom line is the educational system, which of course has been in control of the, of the Caucasians in South Africa, because they still run it. The Caucasians still run it. Unfortunately, they do. It's just like in Namibia, Southwest Africa. They, the Germans, they still run it. Let me get a, another caller here. 202, 202, sure. 271. Good afternoon. 202 271 good afternoon okay 4 470 470 good afternoon okay people just want to listen that's cool you know that's, you want to just listen that's cool so <laughs> there you go man yeah <laughs> there you go but there's another call, some other callers and I'll try to catch them but you know brother Bamani it, you know we we have our work cut out for us, for those of us who love Africa and love Africans and want to, you know, help us. And, and what you're doing is monumental because you're showing them. For those for those of us who never made that connection, just like Brother uh, Lusk, Ted Lusk in, in Montgomery, I mean, he's, he loves Africans, no doubt about it. He listens to the program. He knows a number of people. He shares information with me. It'll be a beautiful thing once he has the opportunity and you're providing that, that, you know, it, it may cost, you know, uh, 45 for 44, you know, in terms of your package and about another $2,000 at the most of so $6,000 that, 
you know, you, here you can go to a trip of a lifetime. You know, 646, 646, good afternoon. And what they got to do is they got to compare the prices and all this stuff to what's out there in the market also. Right. Um, versus looking at what we, uh, you know, only what we have because they'll be shocked. You know, you see $10,000 going, you know, $10,000. You see all kinds of things, brother. I've right. seen some ridiculous numbers, but the, the value is going to be in that tenuary and, the, um, you know, what's included. So that's, you know, we, right. again, family. Oh, it's sure to me, bro, brother Bomani, to me, you're very economical. It. You're very economical. You know, you're right yeah, in I mean, there. Yeah, it's definitely pricey. You're very you know, affordable. I also let people know that it's, it is pricey because the numbers is what it is. You are, you are away for 10 days, and then, you know, you have complete accommodations, and mm-hmm. you have a full staff of people and crew with you the whole time. Right. When you leave the and, airport, so when you get dropped off at the airport, you're in compute, you know, you're in a secure zone. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, and I'll say that because... Sometimes people wonder about certain things. I was like, no, we can't afford any liability. And, you know, you know I'm a you know, former uh, uh, U.S. Navy aircraft technician. And, you know, when you just do these logistic operations and, you, have, you know, you're around boats, planes, you're, you're around just different uh, countries, different world, you know, you have to just, you know, you, it's, you know, it's an environment where you, that you just got to get used to and be clear on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, because... Africa is probably the least violent and dangerous place I've ever been in my, it my is. life. Right. Number one on the the, the planet. Yeah. Uh, compared to what else I know what goes on from in America, Europe and you know and mm-hmm. you know different parts of the world. Uh, but I say that to let people know that uh, you know we just operate in a you know in a unit in an organized way to where when we move we just make sure everybody is good and we just look out for each other. And you know, we we just make sure that the, our people are crew uh, they understand that to the highest level, and you know we just move accordingly. And just we just ask for everybody just to listen and follow directions, and just flow with what we're doing, and they're good. Yeah. Um, and so on. So, uh, so far so good, and just thankful to the ancestors um, for this, you know, the guidance and the energy just to just make sure that we're good when we make these moves. You know, you're so so you're, you know you're, you're so all over the place. And all of those, and all of these years with over 400 people that you have taken back and forth. To the continent, have you had any bad in, uh, uh, incidents that you? Remember? I've been over six hundred uh, years. As far as uh, you know, directly with us on the tour now. I mean, the worst you get is you may get a little stomach issue because some people just right <laughs> you know, may not have the healthiest immune system, and then right. some people may just they not may just be used to you know you're eating similar foods that you're eating. It's just maybe seasoned up different than you know, and so on, but. Um, you know, may some people some people may just get have issues with those things. Mm-hmm. So that's the worst thing uh, you usually get. Uh, but you know, you just you know, we usually in a, a secure hotel, um, and you know, usually picking you know, a real nice neighborhood to, uh, to stay at. So you know, you just take all those things and you know, I mean, anything could realistically happen. I mean, things you know happen, but uh, everything for me personally is always going to be about um, you know, this military organization. This just you know, being prepared, uh, being you know, being prepared, being ready, having everything in place to just move people around and make sure people are safe, make sure people overstand all the elements of what they need to overstand. Exactly, example, like the phone issues of people snatching phones. You know, I had to just I had to just deal with my tour guide just annoying me every every day about the phones, and you know, and I was like, yo, we got this. And I'm saying, I was like, you know, I'm with a unit of brothers, and you know, you know, we're on code and we're just on point. Um, and you know you just move accordingly and look out for each other, uh, but things do happen. So um, you know usually it's you know we roll in numbers, but the only thing I can tell people, like whenever I pull up in places, sometimes it's twenty, thirty, thirty of us. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know it's uh, mm-hmm. it, it just you know and you just move it. It's incredible. So uh, that's my advantage of do, doing business, and even with the land community, it's just changing numbers. I got people you know, in different sectors just handling business. Right here from my Georgia office, you know, that I've been operating from since 2004. And uh, making moves in Africa and traveling and putting more things in place. You know, as we build, you know, our nonprofit business energy and a bunch of different things to get access to, you know, to grants, to opportunities, uh, including investors, to build a whole town and, you know, do all the things we need to do. And, you know, we just got to just make, you know, make sure that 
we don't stop ourselves or let nobody get in our way of just doing what we need to do. So right on. Got to be strong together. Right on. I, 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 you know, like I said, I admire you, and 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 I'm thank you for the brother that called uh, from L.A. and uh, you know who has been with you, been on three trips with you, you know, to four different countries, you know, and that's yes, yeah, exactly, that's, yeah. And I'm quite sure there's going to be others going to who are going to do the same because uh, just looking at the videos of what I've seen, you know, top notch, you know, good good buses, you know, good coaches good accommodations you know you really pay particular attention to the all these details to make sure that the the brothers and sisters that are under your care they're cared for you know that that's a, that's a good thing man you know and and once again your your uh trips are affordable you know so if if uh, somebody like myself <laughs> who's on a fixed income you know, and so I say, like, as I'm going to uh, start preparing uh, to deal with this uh, trip to Egypt, to Kemet, you know, put my money down, pay on it monthly and so forth. By the time the Kemet trip comes around, I would have some saved, some additional money to to be able to buy a few things there. And, man, I'm I'm looking forward to it, you know. And that's how you can do it, you know. And if you got a, a, a significant other, Y'all come in together and y'all work that out, you know, put the money aside, pay on it consistently so when the things come up. In fact, in, in, in terms of the trip, when do you have to have the money in totally? By by how, how uh, far two, in advance? Two months, before, two months before we travel. Two months before and you then, travel. Uh, based on when people come in, we can just make adjustments from that. But the majority of people, we just try to get that done with. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, if nothing else, you know, we just, the people will, or committed, you know, we get things going for them. And then those are last minute, you know, we do our best to work things out for you. Mm -hmm. But the the most important thing I'm always telling everyone, when you do it in the last minute, uh, we no longer can offer you the full package. You just have to pay for the land package, which is usually 2500 or 2700 mm -hmm. and you get your own tickets. But that's when tickets would have just gone up a lot. Um, like right now, if you were to get on our Senegal and the Gambia tour, uh, you know, we can, you know, we can just reach out to the hotel and say, do you have more rooms in get you on they may they may not uh the bus you know uh, the bus once it's maxed out and max out unless we get a whole bunch of people now to get a bigger one and then it's financially worth it uh but outside of that uh your tickets uh you just gotta lock them in the latest i would lock tickets in is two to three months that's the latest okay uh beyond that the yeah. goal is always to get your tickets five to six months and if you can make group bookings or purchase them at the 11th uh, month uh, then do that that's the best situation for you Mm -hmm. Because everything is based on supply and demand, right? And uh, yeah. you know, and access. You know, many things happen, and once you mm -hmm. book your ticket, you can change certain things. Mm -hmm. So I usually tell people, go ahead to the long layover; it's all good. You know, you may be able to just do a bunch of different things later on to where you can change it to a short layover for less money or get a credit. Uh, so these are things we do professionally at the highest level, mm -hmm. and I tell people whether it's consultation or coming on a tour with us, we handle all these things. And get it done. And uh, when you look at the groups, uh, and as a matter of fact, you know, it's it's more, it's uh, you know, it's well over 600 of us. It's over a period of 16 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, over 600. Uh, over, right on. And, and what, it's, it's 30 journeys. So mm -hmm. if you know, and even if you just calculate 30 times 20 mm -hmm. on average, you now that gives you about 600. Yeah. So what's that's, that's um, the that's the average number. Of, that's the average number well, of people usually it. have, right? About uh, uh, 30 people. 20, 30 people? Um, no, sir. It, it definitely ranges, but the smallest has been a group of eight of us on about two occasions. Okay. And then um, then all the way up to 42, 43. Wow. And okay. uh, so on average, uh, before the COVID-19, it was 20 to 30. Now you're looking at uh, anywhere from about uh, 14 to 18 okay. or 14 to 20. So that yeah. fits everyone on a Toyota Coaster bus, smaller bus. But uh, the, the 30 to 40 people... Or the 25 to 40 yeah. people get you a big coach bus, which is you know nice smooth operation, but you know, it's a pricier bus. But yeah. you have your TVs, your your, your 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 microphone, you have your seat reclining, you have your big windows, yeah. and that's the, how I like to do tours. And that's how I came into the business in 2007, uh, the the second year in business, uh, and you know it was 42 of us, and then the third year that was 2007, and then 2008 it was 30, about 33, 34 of us. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started using those big coach buses. 
Right. And this uh, moving around the country and this, you know, this became a thing. But now we just have, a, have to adjust. So it's another thing, you know, you tell people just, you know, you just work with the flow. And then we have more right. schedules also. <laughs> well, you know, my first time going, I was with a group and it was very inexpensive. And, and we had to, we had trotros. <laughs> Get yeah, around. I did that the first time. Yeah, um, get out of the I, tro- just, tro- just rented one instead. Yeah, yep. So you know, but, it, but you know, you start you start where you can start, man. Yeah. that's the main thing about it. You gotta, and that's what I love about just representing the grassroots. Mm-hmm. Then people know it's okay to build from the ground up. It's that's okay right. to just like like have nothing and then just build it to something. You know, there's there's pride in that. It's mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's work ethics in that. You know, where we come from in Jamaica, and we, you know, our family been here yeah. since the eighties. Uh, they they still there in uh, Flatbush, New York, uh, mm-hmm. or Flatbush, uh, Brooklyn, yeah. and uh, you know, and the one that <laughs> and the the venture out one because you know you you want more, you want to just yeah. build things where you know you and your brothers and sisters, you know, on a global level could just have something, not just you and your family, you yourself, you know, which you know I understand that people have to think about themselves and that's fine, uh, that's uh, natural nature of situations, you know, self preservation, but beyond that and bigger than that. Is you know us building as a unit and as that's a people right. because that's what we see dominate the world. When mm-hmm. you see a, you know, a group of um, a group of Chinese, you know you, right. you see how they move. They exactly. move. Exactly. That's how we know, have to and, move. Now the enterprise. That's how we have you know, to and, move. And, yeah. And that's... you know we invented this. You know, and you know, that's something you just put on a T-shirt. We invented this as far as just the way to do certain things. But you know we have to embrace our own culture of how we did things and how we do things. Mm-hmm. That's right. Oh man, we're coming but, up. Uh, on... But I'm telling you, brother, the haters, the crab in the barrel, they, the black devils, man, they are some sick people. One thing about white devils and about this, the wicked system, you know what you get from that. Right. And I've I've learned to right. be able to calculate life based on what you know the system is about, and you know what you know you know you know and those folks are about. That you know, but then you just it's hard to calculate the people who are with you. Right. You know. You could have one of them married to you and in the same bed with you and having children by you. Mm. That's how deep it gets, brother. Yeah. One of them could be your best friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, so, yeah. uh, you know, but, um, but you know, um, us as a people just, you know, what can we do? Uh, you know, you know, you build well, organizations. My thing is you, you expose them. Infiltrate it. You, you, you expose them so, we, so they could be ostracized. <laughs> you know, never have to deal with us again, man. Because what we need is functional unity. What we need is is love for one another, work with one another, support one another, trust in one another, believe in one another, work with one another, build with one another. All the things that are necessary for us to be a people who are self-respecting and self-defining. All those things. And and, and to me, what you're doing, Brother Bomani, is laying that kind of groundwork. You know, by showing them, hey, we could we could take these trips to Africa, get with some African brothers and sisters, get some land, and develop a subdivision, develop a city, develop a town, develop uh, 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 sewage systems, streets, you know, uh, uh, hospitals, schools, all those things are there. Infrastructure, all those things are there for us. If we have that kind of heart, but more importantly, have that kind of vision, you know, brother, we're up to the last minute, brother Bomani. You got anything else, man? I I appreciate you every time I've called you to come on. You've always worked your schedule to do that, and uh, I really do appreciate it. I, I I'm honored to 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 announce Africa for the Africans on this program every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'm looking forward to you know upcoming trips that you're having to announce those and. And and being on them, because, man, you know, if you, brothers and sisters, if you go to the website, or more importantly, if you want to see pictures, go to facebook.com forward slash Bomani. If you want to see videos, go to youtube.com forward slash Bomani 2007, and you'll see. And, and, and the um, on YouTube, they're updated too, aren't they? Oh yes, absolutely, brother. I don't play around with that, man. That's, <laughs> uh, that's what we in the business of doing. Been doing it for 19 straight years. Just uploading and sharing information about all of our Africa trips, right our on. tours, our schedules, presentations, interviews, uh, any uh, social gatherings, connections. 
and it's just all displayed there. Might as well keep it on a network that spends billions of dollars to keep their network going to where you know you know you know they're making from whatever you're doing, but at the same time too, you get to use it to, as a marketing platform to showcase your stuff to where you just go to your big TV and click on YouTube and you just type in you know, right. you know Bomani, uh, 2007, the YouTube channel name, mm-hmm. and uh, you just uh, literally just see. A world full of videos across many different countries. Yeah, uh, it's fan- fantastic, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much, brother Mani Tayamba. Absolutely, right brother. Appreciate you, um, Oshi, and uh, thanks to our family. So take care, family, and um, I'm on standby. You can always just reach out to me, and you can call me directly at my phone number four zero four nine three one nine four two nine here in uh, Georgia. Right on. And then, all right, you take care. All right, peace. Brothers and sisters, we end this program like we end all of our programs with the words of Stephen Biko. The most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the minds of the oppressed. This program is dedicated and committed to helping to free the African mind. But not just the M-I-N-D, but the M-I-N-E, because under the feet of African people lies all of the resources that everybody wants, think they can't do without, and they sure in hell don't want to pay for. Brothers and sisters, you have a blessed and wonderful day. Shem Hotep means go in peace. Asante Sana means thank you. Bibi Fahodie. Bibi Fahodie means our victorious destiny. Brothers and sisters, we will be victorious. Have a blessed and wonderful day, family. Peace.